Hello, welcome back to the last part of the thematic apperception of the text uh, Resolution and Independence by William Wordsworth. We are in the 17th stanza of the poem. There are uh, the last four stanzas which uh, draw our attention to the reminiscences of meeting the leech gatherer. When he is recollecting his uh, experiences in tranquility, he is now making a few statements which are profound. He says, he narrator says, is a subjective uh, possessive first person, my former thoughts returned. The fear that kills and hope that is unwilling to be fed, cold, pain and labor and all fleshy ills and mighty poets in their uh, misery debt perplexed and longing to be confronted, my question eagerly did I renew. How is it that you live and what is it you do? Uh, the, the first, uh, after the first interaction with the leech gatherer, the immediate question that the narrator asked the leech gatherer was this. How is it that you live? How did you come here to this particular point, by the side of the pond? And what is it that you do? This is, this particular question is common, yet very profound. This simple question is not answered. And if you do not answer this fundamental question, there is no continuation to the conversation and that is the end of communication. Look how important it is. He says, he with a smile did then his words repeat. What did he do? He repeated the same dialogue. What did he say? Collected leeches and made an honest living. So he said, gathering leeches far and wide and traveled. Is it possible to make an honest living by gathering leeches and traveling? Why do I ask these suspicious questions? The reasons are plenty. See, we are all uh, common men and women of this society. We know how tough it is to live in this modern world. You run races to earn, to spend. The whole life is spent in earning and spending. And if you look at it from the monetary point of view, no money is sufficient. Yet this fellow is saying that he is happy, he is contented, he is uh, traveling from moor to moor, pond to pond, and uh, collects leeches and makes a now it's living. Now, if you take this question a still further, is it very natural? Is it very common? Or is it supernatural? Beyond human capabilities. While Wordsworth and Coleridge started writing the poem of lyrical ballads, they had an agenda. The agenda is Wordsworth will write a set of poems which will look natural, but it would be very, very supernatural. On the contrary, Coleridge will write some poems which will look very, very supernatural. But if you read at the bottom of them, they are all very, very natural. Look at Kublai Khan. Look at, um, look at the rhyme of ancient mariner. They look supernatural. Yet, at times, it is very natural. On the contrary, here, Wordsworth writes about the leech gatherer. Looks very natural initially, but is it very natural? Look at Lucy. Looks very natural, but is she very natural? We'll discuss about it when we discuss about the Lucy poems. Right? So, the haunting image of the leech gatherer still lingers in the mind of the speaker and that proceeds. Once I could meet with them on every side, see from all the angles, 
So it is not just physical. It is not just a 180 degree perception. It's 360 degrees. And you have every dimensions of it seen. But they have dwindled long by slow decay. Yet still I perceive and find them where I may. So there is a kind of a autobiographical, a personal, an, an individualistic, a subjective perception of the meeting of Leech Gatter here. While he was talking thus, the lonely place, the old man's shape, the speech all troubled me. Now, what is important here is not Leech Gatherer. Leech Gatherer is gone, gone with the wind. But the impact that laid upon him still lingers. Now, you remember the, in the preface to lyrical ballads, words was uh, once made a statement. Poetry is a spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings recollected in tranquility. Now, this is recollection in tranquility. Some instance, some situation, some dramatic sequence has taken place. Now, at this point of the time, there is a kind of a recollection. And recollection in tranquility is an important process. It's more of a psychological process than uh, the physical one. I seem to see him pace about the weary modes continually. Now, look at this word continually. It's not continuously. Continually. Continually and continuously are uh, quite confusing words. Continually means yes, yes, yes going on and continually is like a continuously is like a single straight line always yeah so he saw them with the regular inter intermissions wandering about alone and silently while i these thoughts within myself pursued he having made a pause the same discourse renewed and Sometimes this idea comes to the mind and then, you know, you start recollecting uh, and this image of the old man comes back to, to his mind. And that brings a plethora of voices in uh, the speaker. That's the conclusive uh, stanza of the poem. And soon with this, he other matter blended. See, it's not just one thought. With the other matters blended, it's a blended, see the stream of conscience, the ideas come one after the other, juxtaposed or intermixed. They come flash in your memory, cheerfully uttered with demon or kind, but stately in the main. And when he ended, I could have laughed myself. See, it's called nostalgia. Well, emotion, experiences may be good or bad. But when you recollect that experience, it often brings a kind of a smile at the tip of your lips. So you get a kind of a, mm, yes, yeah, something like this has happened and it is, okay. I could have laughed myself to scorn to find in that discreet man so firm a, a mind. So man and mind. So if you see this particular word very carefully, it is not just about him, his mind as well, his impression as well, his nature as well. So the last two lines, so that gives a kind of a religious touch here. God, I said, be my help and stay secure. Be, be my side. God, please be by, by my side. I'll think of the leech gatherer on the lonely moor. Whenever I am in a situation where I have doubts of leading, a, and it could be for an honest life, I would definitely remember the leech character because it is possible to lead a happy, contented life even by collecting leeches. Therefore, if you link this particular uh, line, which is leading to a religious conclusion, however, you would see a lot of loose ends uh, from the beginning of the poem, the previous night's disturbance, the morning's uh, you know colorful entry, the leech gatherer, his travel. It's not just the leech gatherer was there. He himself came there. Why did he come? There is a reason for his coming over there as well, right? Need is mutual. So all these loose ends get a kind of a 
resolution and that leads to his independence thank you